Hello, I'm Armin Budish. Welcome to Golden Opportunities. Today, we've got some healthy tips to keep you going strong. Then, we'll uncover essential end-of-life information that's just a click away. We'll reveal secrets to a stunning smile. Plus, feeling forgetful? We'll summarize the signs of Alzheimer's and let you know when to worry. And we'll help you track down lost and forgotten life insurance policies. It's time to get geoing, so pull up a chair and join us at our kitchen table for Golden Opportunities. Gluten is the go-to word these days when it comes to digestive distress. But just how do you know if gluten is guilty for giving you out grief? Dr. Rima Gulati is here with the inside information. Dr. Gulati is a pediatric gastroenterologist with Metro Health. I'm sure I mispronounced your title, but thank you for joining us yeah, today. Thank you for having me here. All right, so a pediatric gastroenterologist, aren't our viewers a little out of that league? Well, actually not really. The conversation starts right in the clinic. Many of the children that I see there are frequently accompanied by their grandparents. And as we are discussing uh, their grandchildren's symptoms, they start wondering if, you know, perhaps many of their symptoms that they have been suffering from may have to do with for instance, gluten or poorly controlled constipation and things like that. So uh, besides, I do work very closely uh, with my adult colleagues. Um, we frequently have conversations and uh, you know, discussions. Um, so I'm very well versed with the impact that this may have for our older individuals. So there's, there's at least three uh, problems that come up that have similar symptoms. There's mm -hmm. celiac, there's non-celiac, uh, uh, gluten sensitivity, Sense. and there's um, uh, uh, b -b 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 irritable bowel. Syndrome. Irritable bowel. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you for that. Sure. Uh, let's start with non-celiac and celiac. What's the difference? So, celiac disease is a well-defined uh, disease entity. It is an autoimmune reaction that is triggered by presence of gluten in our diet, and that's the protein that is found in wheat, barley, and rye, and any products that are derived from these cereal grains. Um, so it's a well-defined uh, disease entity where we can, you know, we have tests for it. Uh, How common is celiac? It is about, uh, the current estimated prevalence is about 1%, uh, which is 1 in 100 people walking on earth have celiac disease. And then what's non-celiac but gluten sensitive? Right, so these are individuals that claim that their symptoms get better once they exclude gluten from their diet, but when we utilize conventional testing for celiac, they do not test positive for any of those. So what are the symptoms that are common to celiac, non-celiac, and irritable sure. bowel? Sure, so that's a great question because there's a great overlap there. None of these are specific for any condition. They can present with abdominal discomfort, bloating, diarrhea, constipation um, is the weight loss with celiac disease patients. Uh, but then we also have a lot of non-specific symptoms like fatigue, tiredness, foggy mind, uh, behavior disturbances, joint pains, muscle aches, all those could be ascribed uh, to all three of them. So if they, if they all have similar symptoms, how do we determine, how do you determine what we have. Sure. So for celiac disease, as I mentioned, there is a blood test that we u utilize to screen. This looks at antibodies to certain proteins like the tissue transglutaminase, endomyzial, and gliadin antibodies. And then if they are positive, which they have a very high level of accuracy, we follow it up with an endoscopy and a tissue biopsy, and it shows characteristic changes. And that's how we know that this is a patient who has celiac disease versus when we pursue any of these tests patients with irritable bowel syndrome or gluten sensitivity, none of those would be positive. Um, how, how reasonable is it to ask somebody to give up gluten when it's everywhere. I mean, bar, you know, uh, rye, wheat, it's, you know, in everything. It is ubiquitous. That's a great question. However, the long-term impact of celiac disease, I, I believe, is the big reason why we ne need to be able to distinguish between these right off the bat, because there are increased risks uh, associated with like continued... What? Um, like uh, poor bone health, uh, fractures, uh, anemia, 
and um, you know scarily lymphoma which is you know wow. a malignancy of the GI tract or of the bloodstream so would which you is recommend somebody just going off of wheat and rye and trying it themselves and you know, if they feel a little better, then, then great? Or? Personally, I would not. In the right clinical setting, which means if you have these persistent gastrointestinal symptoms, you are better off asking your doctor to exclude celiac disease with certainty before you go on a gluten-free diet. Because if down the line you come back with this question, hey doctor, do I have celiac disease? We wouldn't be able to say because the presence of these positive antibodies and the tissue changes depend on the, pre you know, it, the positivity depends on presence of gluten in Is our bodies. Is it okay bodies. to cheat a little bit if we have celiac? No, not oh. with celiac. No cheating with celiac. Okay, thank you very much, doctor. <laughs> you're welcome. It if, is a pleasure being here. If you're having issues with your intestines, trust your gut and trust this gastroenterologist and see your doctor. My thanks to Dr. Gulati for joining us today. Find out more by calling Metro Health at 216-778-7800 or visit www.metrohealth.org. Want more Metro Health medical information? Be sure to tune in to WTAM 1100 each Saturday morning at 7 for Metro Health and You, hosted by Dr. Christine Alexander. Next, going online for end-of-life issues. But first, have you heard the buzz? A beehive can pour out between 100 and 200 pounds of honey a year. But before this sweet substance is stored, a honeybee works hard to meet the comb's quota. Just how much honey does a bee bring in? After we buzz off briefly, we'll be right back with the answer. I know the devastating effects that back pain can have not just on you, but your entire family. Instead of covering up your pain with drugs or surgery, we offer a procedure called non-surgical decompression. Decompression increases spinal disc space and it draws nutrients back into the disc. This allows healing to take place from the inside out. So if you're suffering with chronic pain, there is hope. I invite you to call our office to see if this proven treatment option can mean freedom from your pain. There's no time for sweet talk during honey production it takes an enormous amount of help in the hive to harvest honey. That's because each bee only turns out one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey during their little lifetimes. Talking about the end of life is hard. There are so many emotions along with so many decisions that need to be made. Where can you turn? Family and friends come to mind, but one less thought of resource is the internet. Here to explain is Mike Belsito, the co-founder of eFuneral, a resource website for end-of-life issues. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thank you. Thanks for having so, me. So why a website? Don't most people just go to the neighborhood funeral home? Well, sometimes, but sometimes there's more than one neighborhood funeral home. I think back to my cousin. Uh, my cousin actually died uh, about three years ago, and he was in his 40s, and where he lived, Parma Heights, there's six funeral homes within two miles. So for our family, we didn't know which funeral home was better than the other. We didn't know which could work best with our budget. So we ended up just sort of picking one and hoping for the best, and the service was fine, but I remember I'm at dinner with my wife after the service took place, and the only reason we were at that restaurant restaurant was because of reviews I read for it online of course. and that's when I realized you know we as a society have more information to decide where to go to dinner than when to do something so much more important like plan a funeral service and so much more expensive that's exactly right so what would we find on eFuneral yeah, there's all sorts of services that we offer, and the best thing for families is that everything we offer is free. So as an example, we offer the ability to register and search uh, the area to find out which funeral homes are in the neighborhood, uh, but then what they charge, pricing information for the various services, what the reviews are from families that have used those services in the past. We have a whole resource center where we have hundreds of articles and videos on topics related to funeral planning. We have a dashboard that helps families plan with What's various end of life services. Well, right when you log in, it sort of lays out everything that's involved with end of life, and we're encouraging people to think about the specific topics. What's a resource center? 
Yeah, so our resource center has uh, hundreds of articles and videos on all sorts of topics related to end of life. And oftentimes, those are articles that are authored by experts in their field, like licensed social workers, funeral directors, um, sometimes even doctors. So it's a whole base of information that families can access. Funeral costs, they range all over the lot and can be quite expensive. Um, does your f funeral website help us with that yeah absolutely so and you're exactly right the average funeral today in greater cleveland is old, over eighty five hundred dollars but the it can it can range greatly you can have one funeral home that's uh, maybe a full service funeral is three thousand and the next is eighty five hundred dollars so what e-funeral allows you to do is search your neighborhood and one by one compare one funeral home versus the other to find out what they're actually charging. And in addition to the pricing, you can also see what families have had to say about their services as well. Uh, now, you mentioned your site has events. What kind of events are we talking about for a funeral website? I mean, yeah, so, you know, we're an online company, but we love to engage families and have conversations offline and in real, um, you know, face to face communication. So, one of the things that we've done is we put on these events called Death Cafes. And this is a whole movement that actually started out of the United States, but we brought it here to. Cleveland. And what a death cafe is, is essentially an environment, um, usually in a coffee house type setting, where people talk about death and dying, but in a comfortable, relaxed atmosphere. And some of these. Sort of like an online support group? Um, in a way. It's not a bereavement group or a grief support group, but what it is is really, you know, death is a taboo subject. So what we're trying to do is provide a place and a forum where people can have a conversation about death and not feel so weird about it. Hmm. So we have all sorts of people that come. Some are approaching death. They're, we actually sat next to a woman at our recent Death Cafe event that was 93 years old. Um, but some are just curious in general or, or work in the profession as a funeral director or hospice professional. Well, it's in interesting, and uh, you're on the cutting edge, I think. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. It's very true. Death is a part of life. And instead of avoiding the subject, the important information offered on eFuneral can help you end your avoidance over end-of-life issues. My thanks to Mike Belsito for joining us today. Learn more about eFuneral by calling 855-338-6372 or log on to www.efuneral.com. Next, Mouth Matters. Looking for places to go? Things to do? Welcome to our community calendar. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a Superman exhibit. The created in Cleveland superhero made his debut 75 years ago. And to celebrate, the Cleveland Public Library is showcasing a treasure trove of memorabilia through September 14th. To find the facts faster than a speeding bullet, call 216-623-2800 or land on www.cpl.org in a single bound. You've seen those laundry detergent commercials where the mom's striving to have the whitest whites and the brightest brights. Well, Kathy Oliver wanted that too, but not for her clothes. She wanted her teeth to be their whitest and her smile to be its brightest. So she had the bright idea to turn to dentist Steve Marsh for help. Kathy and Steve are here today to show and tell. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. Kathy, let's start uh, with you. What brought you to Steve Marsh? Well, I'd actually seen him on this show and looked him up online and sent an email, and he responded, so I booked an appointment. Well, you're very smart watching our show. Well, Thank yeah. <laughs> Steve, when you met Kathy, uh, what were the options you offered to her? Well, you know, her, her, one of her concerns was the shape of her teeth, and the other concern, as she said, was the color of her teeth. She wrote it in the email, and again, I try to address those personally. Uh, and she had said that uh, whitening f with the trays that she had used had made her teeth sensitive, right, right. Kathy? Very sensitive. And so that happens with some people. It has to do with gum recession and such. So we thought, what other options are there? And because she was also talking about the shape and her smile line, we decided to go with veneers, and, and that's how we ended up going. But we, we talked about what she wanted to accomplish before we did it. Okay. And... I assume you may have a picture or two for us. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's nice of Kathy to allow us to use them. And if you look in that first picture, Armin, um, that's what she came in with. She had that um, sp space between her upper front teeth. Her lower teeth, you can see, were quite stained. Uh, Kathy uh, drank, uh, drinks a lot of coffee and occasional red wine, I think. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so on the lower arch, first, at first, what we do is we reshape the lower. This was right after Zoom. We did that in the office takes an hour and a half to get your teeth whitened, and that's where we started. Okay, and 
Uh, did you mention that you, you've also, oh, okay, tell us about this before I go on. Well, so what happened was um, we did the whitening before, and the reason we did it was that even though we're going to use veneers, uh, veneers are translucent, arm and they're porcelain, they show through, and that's one of the reasons they look so beautiful. So what we also did was we made these provisionals. These are temporary veneers. And I wanted her to wear those so that she got a sense of what it would look like. And then she can say to me, Steve, I want more shape and whatever. And then ultimately, um, this is it, what it was with veneers. Um, again, we reshaped the lowers. And we, again, wanted to do it in sections, as I remember. Mm -hmm. And Kathy's main, main uh, concern was the upper front teeth. We did the uppers. Uh, subsequently, we did the lowers, but we really wanted to address her upper front teeth, and, and that gave her a beautiful white smile and, and established a smile eye. Right. Well, Kathy, tell us how the process went for you. Um, it, it, it's pretty extensive, uh, but I was comfortable. Everything went wonderful, and and you had had you said teeth sensitivity before. Yes. Did you have that again? Um, no, not anymore. Really? Yeah. How did you avoid that, Steve? Well, again, we used the Zoom in the office. That helped with the sensitivity so she didn't have to maintain it with trays. And the veneers actually come over the teeth. So where she was having sensitivity, it was now covered up. Not unlike um, painting, let's say, nail polish on a nail. It covers it up. And so it's decreased the sensitivity. And now she doesn't have to do any whitening. It's right. all right there. And give us it's a smile, good. Kathy. All right. All right. Thank you both very much for coming in. Appreciate that. Thank you. Our pleasure. As Kathy discovered, there are a variety of ways to get a white, bright smile, and Dennis Steve Marsh put together a practical plan to make it happen. Now, if you're like Kathy and you want a dazzling white smile, why not do what she did? Get in touch with Steve. You can use the information that's up next. See what Dr. Stephen Marsh can do for your smile by calling 440-461-1003 or visit www.clevelandsmiles.com. Next, advice on Alzheimer's. It's time to get up and go, an exercise minute on golden opportunities. Hello, I'm Mike Carbon from Breakout Fitness, and today we are going to do a seated calf raise to work the calves in the lower half of our legs. This is a great exercise because it's going to help us keep our balance a little better. All right, we got our exercise bands. You ready to go? I'm ready. Great. We're going to start with our feet out in front of us, our heels in the ground. We're going to grab the exercise band and place it around the front half of the foot between your arch and your toes. Let your arms hang naturally in front of you wherever the band will pull them. Start with your toes pointed towards the ceiling and then bury them into the ground all the way up and all the way down. We want complete range of motion. so. Take it nice and slow. How does that feel, Armand? I think my legs are too long. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the band nice and tight, everybody. 12 to 15 repetitions, two to three times a week. And now it's your turn to get up and go. For your copy of the exercise booklet, please send $1 for postage to Golden Opportunities, 23240 Chagrin Boulevard, Suite 450, Beachwood, Ohio, 44122. As we pile on the years, those momentary memory lapses become less funny and more worrisome. Our kids might tease us about having Alzheimer's, and we wonder, what if they're right? Sarah Sobel is here uh, to tell us when worrying is worth it and when it's not. Sarah is an advocacy and outreach specialist with the Alzheimer's Association Cleveland Area Chapter. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. What a great organization the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. is. Uh, first, a quick review. Forgetting a name, losing our car keys, mm -hmm. that's normal, right? In general, yes. With typical aging, we may forget names or we may misplace our car keys, but we typically remember minutes or hours later. Now, for someone with Alzheimer's disease, that's completely different. Memory loss seriously disrupts your daily life. So that name that you forgot minutes ago, it may take days, months to remember. And as the disease progresses, that memory connection may be lost entirely. So are we looking for patterns? Are we looking for a regularity that increases with forgetfulness? That's a really good question. And I think it's not so much about patterns as it is about consistency and frequency of that memory loss. Okay. So in the early stages, we're talking about short-term memory loss, but as the disease progresses, it's more of an all-day, everyday thing where you may forget things or you even may make poor decisions based on hampered judgment. Can you give us an example? 
Sure, but I think the biggest thing uh, for folks is that memory loss looks different and feels different for every single individual. So a symptom in one person may look and feel different in another if it does exhibit at all. all right. So as you're interviewing me, you know, you may fumble on a word or you may forget my name momentarily. But, Which I do all the time. <laughs> but you know, we're fumble talking about words. Alzheimer's disease. Right. Uh, if you had the disease itself, you might uh, not remember exactly why we're sitting across from each other or even have a really difficult time following the conversation. Okay, well then I don't have Alzheimer's, that's good. Mm -hmm. Issues with driving, that can be a tip off of uh, Alzheimer's too, right? Yes, it can. People with Alzheimer's may have trouble driving or they frequently get into auto accidents because their spatial understanding has been compromised. So they may also forget what they're supposed to do at a stop sign or they may forget how to drive to a familiar place that they've been going to for years. So if we see this happening in ourselves or we see a loved one, what do we do? The first and most important thing to do is to talk with someone. Um, if it is indeed Alzheimer's disease, the sooner you get support for it, the sooner you can get treatment that could slow the progress. Now, one of um, the things that we tell folks is to start recording what those changes may be so that when you go see your physician, the physician can assess whether those symptoms really are Alzheimer's disease or maybe something else. All right, the Alzheimer's Association, as I started at the beginning, is a great organization mm -hmm. um, and it supports so many people, but there's ways that we can support the Alzheimer's Association. Tell us about that Absolutely. Quickly. So one of the ways to support our 1-800 helpline and our other free services is by participating in our Walk to End Alzheimer's. This year we have three opportunities to do so. Okay. Um, the first is in Avon on okay. September 21st. The Very second good. one is in Kirtland on September 29th. And the last one is in downtown okay. in October on October 13th. Very good. So. All right, and uh, we're gonna give a phone number and people can uh, call and sign up? Absolutely, and this is our 24 hours a day, seven days a week helpline. It's 1-800-272-3900, and our helpline staff will be more than happy to answer any questions about warning signs or to talk about the walk with you. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate that very much. Thank you. Even if you don't remember Sarah's name, remember her When to Worry guidelines about Alzheimer's, and remember to sign up for the walk to support the uh, association's great work. For help with either, use the information, the phone, coming up next. For more information, contact the Alzheimer's Association at 1-800-272-3900 or click to www.alz.org. Next, we'll ensure you don't lose money on lost insurance policies. They haven't been inducted to a Hall of Fame. They don't get stopped for autographs or photos. They don't have entourages or shoe deals, but they still deserve our applause and admiration because they are fighters, believers, heroes. We are the Metro Health System. We are the proud sponsor of the comeback. Did you miss a phone number or a website? Here's your second chance because we're going to list all that information again, then we'll be back to you to help find lost life insurance. mom or dad passed away and now you're trying to locate all their assets. Did they have life insurance? You recall that they mentioned insurance years ago but now you can't find any policy. Sadly many times policies are lost or forgotten and proceeds go unclaimed. 
Here to ensure that you take the right steps to find lost life insurance is my law partner, Mike Solomon. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Um, Mike, how can we find out if mom or dad had a life insurance policy? Well, I mean, unfortunately, there's no easy answer to this. And, and you're right, many times policies just get lost. But I'll try to give you three easy steps to at least reduce that possibility. What's first? Well, number one, what you might want to do is, is become a snoop. So if your parents have passed away, you have all their mail directed to your address so that you can look at any mail that's coming in. Or if, if they'll let you out, they're alive, let, let you look through their mail, see if there are any bills from insurance companies or any sort of correspondence from insurance companies. That's the first place to start. Okay, number two. Number two, if you can, go through their, their bank statements, their checks, cancel checks, or any, any items like that. It'll show a payment to an insurance company. Then, you know, that's something to look into. Uh, you know, next, you might want to uh, contact their former employer and see if they have any group coverage. Or if you find a business card lying around with an insurance company's name or an agent's name, that would be another place to start. All right. And if none of that works, is there anything else we can do? Well, there's one other good solution. It's called MIB Solutions. And what this is is a gigantic database of 190 million records. And that will give you all information about insurances, insurance policies, even if companies have merged, it will help you track all that down. I think we have a website that will be coming up soon. All right. That's www.mib.com slash lost underscore life underscore insurance dot html. Very easy to remember. All right. Are there any drawbacks? Yeah, unfortunately, there are a number. Number one, it, it costs you money. It's for $75. Number two, they don't go back forever. They go back uh, to around 1996, so you can't look before that time. Additionally, they only cover individual policies, not group policies. And also, if they're smaller policies, they might not even be covered at all. So you've got all those problems. And then finally, even if you find the policy, it doesn't mean it's enforced. It still might not be enforced, but still that's a good it's way a to It's a good start. way to go. Right. Okay, thanks, Mike. You're welcome. If a loved one bought a life insurance policy, don't let the insurance company just keep the proceeds. Take Mike's advice. Try every avenue you can to track down the money. After all, your loved one bought the policy for you, not for the insurance company. Call Butish, Solomon, Steiner, and Peck at 1-888-236-5173 for more information or to schedule a speaker for your organization. Or log on to www.butishandsolomon.com. Thanks for joining us. On next week's show, you plan for retirement, but surprise, it arrived unexpectedly early. We've stocked up on timely investment advice. If it's been painful to pee, a urinary infection could be the culprit. And we have lots more. Until next week, please make the most of your golden opportunities. Would you like to join our kitchen conversation? All you have to do is call toll-free 1-877-765-1543 and leave us your question, name, and phone number. Or log on to www.golden.tv for all the latest information and show updates.